So welcome. My name is Caroline Goslin. This is This Week, the new podcast from the Experience New Jersey team, where we aim to bring you great conversations with local thought and business leaders in our community. Today, we are here with Mark Yeesees from SunQuest Funding. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thanks for, for coming on. And you ready to have some conversations about sure. real estate? World War Three and the whole, stuff. whole shebang. <laughs> yep, stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, Absolutely. I am. So you're not too far. I'm in Maplewood. You're just a town over in West Orange. Correct. So sure. why don't you kind of start by telling us a little bit about yourself and you're, you're a New Jersey native, right? I'm a Jersey boy, born and bred Essex County most of my life, except for college and a short period of time with an ex-wife. And, uh, uh, I have been involved in real estate and mortgages, believe it or not, since 1987. Uh, yeah, I've been around the block. This and well, believe, I lost your hair. All right, yes. Well, I'm an old guy. I've been really full time in this industry since, since the early 90s, and uh, I came out of manufacturing, of which there is none left in New Jersey, really, which is why I don't work in manufacturing anymore. And I uh, watched uh, watched the area change dramatically over the last uh, couple of decades. Yeah, so. I'm sure. And you're you're an avid bike rider. Um, I do. I am a cyclist. Yes. Yeah, cyclist. Sorry. That's I okay. Like about cyclists, I should know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you like talk to me a little bit about some of the your best kind of rides in New Jersey, like in our in our beautiful state, the Garden State. Like, where do you ride your bike? Like on a on a nice, beautiful spring morning on a weekend like where where do you what kind of trails do you like to hit well we're on the road primarily i'm not a, a mountain bike guy but the the prettiest rides are up through 100 and in somerset county you know out towards uh tewksbury and up that way or peapac gladstone it's it's just magnificent up there there's varied terrain the horse farms yes it, yes i cannot live there they won't <laughs> have me but it's, it's, <laughs> It is, it's a beautiful area. It really it is. is. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you if you don't need the you know the quick commute to New York City, it's it's a great area to kind of move out to, or you can have more land, you know, fresh yes. air, all of that. Yes. Um, so okay, so let's kind of go back to kind of your trajectory from manufacturing to the mortgage business. Well, I um I was it was my family's business. I was fourth generation. It was a company actually started by my great grandparents, my great grandmother, even though my great grandfather's name was on the business, my great grandmother was a driving force. And she set all her boys up in separate part. They were hardware stores at the time, separate hardware stores in different towns. So they wouldn't fight. They fought anyhow. And my grandfather's store, it, we became an industrial distributorship. And at the end, I was actually involved in the development of, of airbags for vehicles. And uh, we had a company where we had over a million dollars in sales we were looking at for this company. There were uh, the, the, a guy named uh, Alan Breed invented airbags and airbag triggering devices. And we sold to Breed Automotive and they brought in a whole new management team to bring the, the company public. And they cut me out and uh, in this Northeast. Yeah. And uh, my ex-wife's. Yeah. Pardon me. And it's like the twists and turns of life, right? Yes. So, wow. And my my ex wife's family owned a real estate company and an appraisal business, and uh, she introduced me to the guy who taught me the, the the mortgage business, and here I've been ever since. And voila! And so yes. you and I met. I want to say maybe four years ago. Four, uh, four years ago, yeah. right before the pandemic, probably. That's yes. right. That's right. And we're actually both part of the Executive Association of New Jersey, uh, which is actually the oldest standing networking group in New Jersey. Yes. Uh, and we, you know, I think that we had heard about each other through several different, you know, other kind of business networking organizations. Right. And people were like, you guys need to meet. You both are in real estate. Right. And uh, and we met, and we've been working together ever since. Right. Well, um, I, I don't blame you. You avoided me, and I don't. I, you know, that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been avoiding you for the past four years because we have managed to work with, um, you know, a lot of mutual clients. Yes. You did my personal mortgage. Uh, you did my mother's mortgage. Um, so you you've been a very trusted mortgage advisor over the years, and and that's why you're here. Thank um, you. 
so yeah, we wanted to just kind of, you know, talk, um, well, broadly about the market, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot going on, um, yes. and maybe kind of dig a little deeper and see how that's impacting, you know, buyers and sellers in our local market. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess kind of to, to, to start it off, like there's so much going on, right? Like geopolitics going on right now in the world and the, the invasion of Ukraine is, I think, going on like day 16. Um, why don't you kind of give us kind of a broad strokes, um, you know, kind of what, what the market is like it for, through your lens? Okay. So the market really started to change um, really about midway through the pandemic. I, I look at the, 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 and I thought about this, not because of this podcast, but I thought about this in general, uh, when that ship was stuck in the Suez Canal, the Evergreen ship, if you remember that, yeah. that was the beginning of the change in the markets because that's when uh, supply chain issues be came to the public's attention. Hmm. And really it was right after that when um, <clears throat> we stopped being able to get things that we needed. And I'm not talking about toilet paper, which went on from the beginning. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, the price of lumber, trying to get construction materials. You know, on that ship, believe it or not, were half a dozen containers of high-end bicycles. And for me, it brought it home as, you know, and I know who the manufacturer was, you know, you know, guys can't buy bicycles because this ship is stuck in the middle of the Suez Canal for three weeks. And, uh, and that was the beginning. And then that started causing inflationary pressures and inflation affects interest rates. And, uh, and the Fed has made some announcements recently, but that those announcements are too late. Like they needed to start doing this before now, in my opinion. So anyhow, that, so long story short, that's where we are, you know, the, and then Ukraine has exacerbated supply chain issues because we do import from Russia. It's also affected travel. It's affected, um, uh, you know, construction and construction and, you know, and world banking is affected and all these things, you know, if you can't, if suppliers and purchasers can't get money to help, uh, can't get money to help uh, move supplies around, then that's going to affect supply chain also. So all these things are interrelated and, and it, they affect us on an individual basis. Right. And so, you know, kind of to get granular in terms of, you know, because we're humans and humans want to know, well, what what's in it for me, right? Mm -hmm. Or how is that going to impact me? Sure. So like this morning, the headline was that Goldman Sachs was, you know, going to be pulling out all of its, you know, business from Russia mm -hmm. and then JP Morgan followed suit. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see that going? And, you know, Amazon is no longer going to be, you know, shipping there. And so like more supply issue problems coming down the pipe. Right. Um, so how, how is that going to like directly impact the real estate kind of, you know, mortgage market? I don't know direct, you know, I haven't really sat down to think about it or read about it at this point. But my thought is, is that Russia is a huge country. Okay. And they were a trader, a trading partner with favored trading status. So that's a huge market of hundreds of millions of people that we can no longer sell product to and they can no longer sell product to us. And so that's clearly not good for the economy and anything that affects the economy eventually affects us on an individual basis. How that will affect us exactly, I, I really haven't spent time to to investigate that yet right and you don't have a crystal ball either so <laughs> yeah, yes i do right here <laughs> well so okay there's been a lot of talk about refinancing and how like the window for that is closing can you yes. kind of talk to a little bit you know anybody who's yes. buying in this market who you know who, who is thinking of refinancing and maybe misses the window is there another opportunity coming down the pipe at some point well well, there will always be an opportunity, you know, but right now interest rates have gone up. Um, they're in the 4% range, bottom line. And um, that that's really the highest the rates have been in the last several years. So there's not really much room to refinance 
for you know a simple rate and term refinance to lower your payments. Refinances exist for debt consolidation, spousal buyouts, renovation loans, things like that. But to to you know as the market was hot for refinances, those were just for people to lower rates, go from a thirty year to a fifteen year. I went from a thirty year to a twenty year, you know things like that. But because you know a lot of people kept their payment nearly the same, taking a shorter term, cutting and lowering their their interest expenses. But right now, the, that's gone. That's really gone. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask about was how, you know, there's a really kind of rare combination of low mortgage rates um, and high inflation right now. Mm -hmm. um, so where where do you see, because one of those is going to have to, you know, go be impacted. And so what, what's, what's, what do you see happening there? Okay. So um, inflationary pressures cause rates to go up, bottom line. OK, because uh, rates are most of the rates that we see on a daily basis come from the bond market, the U.S. Treasury market, which is considered a fixed income security. Uh, when rates go up, the value of those securities go down when inflation goes up and the rates go higher. And that's what's happening right now. Um, mortgage interest rates are based on the 10 year Treasury, the yield on the 10 year Treasury has gone up about half a percent over the last month or two, okay? Mostly in the last few weeks. And that's what drives mortgage interest rates. Part of that was a reaction to the Fed announcing that they were raising rates. When the Fed announce, announces that they're raising rates, there's not a direct correlation between the Fed raising rates and the treasury market. Um, when the Fed announces they're raising rates, that's a rate that banks, it's called the short term, the overnight lending rate. That's the rate that banks and the Fed charge each other for short term loans when they borrow money from each other. Uh, mortgage interest rates come from the bond market. It's completely different. But when the short term interest rates start to go up, the the yields on the bonds also start, start to creep up. And then that's where our interest rates are affected. Uh, I'll get a little wonky for a second. Sure. But, but right now, usually there's a between the two year and the treasuries have different uh, uh, longevity, you know, terms from, you know, six month to 30 year. Most of what you look at where the cost of money is for business and mortgage is somewhere between the two year or the one year and the, the 10 year. 30 year mortgage rates are based off the 10 year. If you look right now, there's only, there's less than a half a percent difference really it's about 40, 30 or 40 basis points between the two year and the 10 year, there should really be a point and a half difference. So what that's saying is, is yes, we have inflation right now. Um, and since the Fed is raising the short term rate, it's pushing the two year up, but the 10 year is resisting that because they're seeing possible recession down the road towards the end of the year and inflation easing. So the, the, uh, the bond market is predictive not just what's happening right now. So if we're reading the tea leaves as the bond market is, they're saying that we should be heading into some sort of recession towards the end of the year, which is believable based on what's going on in the in, in Europe. And um, we've been in a really hot, hot um, economy basically since the middle of Obama's first term. And so it, it can only go on for so long. Right. And then, you know, when there's a recession, that's anti-inflationary and that causes rates to come back down. And most uh, economists have been predicting rates somewhere in the three and a half, three and three quarter percent range towards the end of the year, which is about a half a percent lower than we're seeing now. OK, which is another opportunity to refinance for those that, you know, right. that end up with a four or four and a quarter percent interest rate now. Right. right. But that's I, you know, and that's not written in stone. That's just what the prognosticators are saying now, and we've seen them be wrong before. Okay. Right. So just out of curiosity, I mean, this is what I love about you because you, you know, this is why when I have like not even just first time home buyers, but just home buyers in general or sellers who want to refinance, who kind of want to understand kind of, you know, what what the you know what the um, variables are. 
um, you're a great teacher and educator, and you you Thank really you. have a gift for kind of walking people through their options. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious. I mean, when I send clients your way, they always go, oh, my God, thank you so much, like, for like, connecting us with Mark. Like, he was amazing. We were going to do this, you know, and they have a plan. When you are meeting with those clients, how often do they ask you about the market? Like, what, what the mm -hmm. you know, the... This, the conversation that we just had about bond markets and inflationary pressures and all of this, like, do they ever ask you about that? They don't, but I tell them. Good. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. And I even show them industry newsletters where they can look at what the markets are saying, right. like what, what the experts are saying about the markets. Cause that's important. Cause to me, if you understand, like most people in my industry try and, create this shroud of mystery about the mortgage market. And in my mind, if everything's transparent, then because you as a buyer, you can't control your mortgage process. You can't control interest rates. You can't control the documentation that your mortgage guy is going to ask for because we follow Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines and they say we need this. And if you don't have this, loan's not saleable to Fannie or Freddie, and we're not going to close it. So by understanding the process and understanding the markets, it, it gives people a, a sense of control and comfort that, okay, I know they're asking for this and it really sucks, but I know I have to give it to them. Right. Or, you know, yeah, I see the treasury market moving. I see the mortgage backed security market moving. I know rates are higher today. This guy's not just pulling my leg. He's telling me the truth. Right. And those things are important, I think, you know, for my consumers to understand. Yeah. And I think that that's something that we have in common and not to like toot our horn here. But I think, you know, like we are willing to lose a deal to do the right thing um, for our clients. And there's a lot of people in my industry who are not and a lot of people in your industry who are not. Correct. Um, and that actually reminds me just this week. I mean, we you know, we had. Um, we had a family ready to put in an offer on a house. They'd been looking, they were pre-approved with a big mortgage a company uh, nationwide um, who had, you know, supposedly looked at their paperwork um, and they were, they were ready to go. And I, I said, you know, the offer, it's multiple offers were gonna be coming in on this property. I said, I really wanna put our best foot forward. Um, I would love for you to talk to Mark just no obligation to use him, but just talk to Mark and kind of walk through kind of all of your, you know, your, your financial um, kind of picture and see what he has to say and see if he has any advice. And let's make sure that he concurs with, you know, the view of this national mortgage lender. Um, and you, uh, you had a conversation with them on a Sunday afternoon, which I truly appreciate because offers were due Monday. And you really took the time to kind of dig a little deeper and you you saved them from making a big mistake, which is to, you know, put in an offer on this house where they would have been locked into a high interest rate mortgage because you discovered things on their credit report that that they could easily fix over the next three months um, and then come back to the table to make offers with a much better financial picture and and get a better rate. Um, which means that, you know, you lost the opportunity to make the mortgage that weekend. I lost the opportunity to make an offer on that property, but it was the right thing to do. And that client now is a client for life because they were really grateful that, you know, that we, we dug deeper, um, and cared about the outcome for them, you know? So I just wanted to, you and I hadn't had an opportunity to really kind of talk about that, but I, that's what I value so much about you is that like, you tell it like it is, you know? Thank you. And, um, and, so, and as you know, my business is dependent on referral sources like you, of course, right. there's nobody like you, but referrals, other realtor referral sources. And I can't wait. Work with there are other them. realtors in your life, Mark? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You're the only one in my life, but, uh, uh, kidding but you know uh and some i can't work with because they expect me to do things that are that are you know just not they're i wouldn't they don't ask for anything illegal but you know sometimes they're not they're just not ethical yeah. and i just won't do that yeah so i'm not Love gonna it. have a cellmate named bubba for somebody's loan frankly so yeah right <laughs> <laughs>
Well, let's kind of shift from that, you know, um, from this geopolitics, financial stuff for a second. And, sure. um, you know, tell me, okay, so I know this about you because you're always kind of throwing out fun facts and history facts, but you are a history buff. Yes. Um, and so I wanted to um, kind of you share with our audience here a little bit about kind of what's significant about today. Um, okay. So share with What's us. The fact that Levi's introduced bell bottoms today in like 1969. Is that what you want to know? Among among the other things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, today was the day that the pandemic was officially announced two, I guess, two years ago, in the front page of newspapers. And the first cases of the Spanish flu were announced in in 1919 believe it or not so talk about a coincidence you know a hundred year almost exactly hundred year coincidence it's it's just crazy that both of those things would happen on the same day yeah 101 years apart yeah you know, absolutely it's crazy you know so well, thank you for enlightening us no no problem <laughs> no problem um so if um so we didn't really get to talk about this at the top of the hour here, but um, if if my clients wanted to, if our if our viewers wanted to kind of you know find you and know a bit more about your company, kind of tell us about your partner, where you guys are based, how long you've been in business. Okay, our our office is in Cranford, New Jersey. I'm an Essex County boy, not far from you, West Orange. Um, uh, my my business partner and I founded the company in 2002. Uh, we decided that we were going to do the right thing by borrowers. We weren't going to make money from fees. We weren't going to slam people at the closing table. And all those things are, they can't be done now because the consumers are protected by laws. But that was, you know, that was normal course of business for any, many mortgage companies 20 years ago. And, um, and, and, and we've continued since we survived the, the financial crisis of, you know, 2008, 2009. And um, we are a direct lender. We do close loans in our own name. Okay. And, uh, and uh, besides the regular, I'm going to buy a house and put, how much should I put down? We do a lot of renovation loans. So if people want to do an addition or a new kitchen or, uh, you know, uh, things like that, new garage attached to the house, we do those types of loans also. Great. Any awesome. other questions? Any answers? I do have one more, one last question because yes. we are ending this show okay. with um, with a question that we ask all of our guests, which is, "What did you learn this week?" What did I learn this week? And I just, I, I just had it. And was it I, the Levi's? What's that? Was it the whole Levi's? No, there, no, there was something else. Else, I oh oh about the the cannabis stores in town. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, tell us about that. O that only thirty three percent of the bit of the of the communities, the townships or towns, whatever you want to call them, in New Jersey are approving legal recreational cannabis uh, businesses. Yeah. Yes. And, that is an interesting uh, statistic. Oh, pardon me. That's an interesting statistic. It is, and uh, the town I live in happens to it happens to approve to have approved those stores and we're going to have four of them in town and there's wow and the licensing application has application licensing the application for licenses has started or permits have whatever they are like a liquor license i guess it's going to be a pot license and, and what about maplewood and south orange were they on the list i don't know i asked that question um i'm actually on the board of directors of the west orange chamber of commerce and there was a chamber meeting earlier this week and one of the people applying for a license uh, presented to our our uh, board meeting and that's how I learned this stuff actually so interesting all right well thanks for for sharing that with us no um, and I have a habit now of answering that question as well so what did I learn this week um, I learned that you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink. Um, and you know, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> that is a very true statement. Yes. Uh, so, well, Mark, thank you so much for being our thank guest you. on this week, our new podcast. Thank uh, you. It was a lot of fun. 
Awesome. Thank we look forward to seeing everybody next time.